All right, state of the club. Um, our mission statement, the purpose of Badger Aquatics is to provide a competitive swimming experience for swimmers of all ages and abilities. Back is committed to supporting each swimmer uh, in achieving his or her potential as a competitor and individual through a continuum of excellence in coaching and education. Um, we'll talk a little bit about sort of our financial situation. I don't know if Bob was going to do that or Drew. Yeah, Bob will, Bob will chime in. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jacob. So as you can see here, the, the comments under the financially stable uh, uh, category are uh, four items. The first one is the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, better known as PPP. Uh, as, as you probably most of you know, uh, this was money provided uh, by our federal government to support small businesses like ours during this uh, unusual time. We did uh, qualify for uh, a PPP loan, which will be ultimately forgiven to the club. Uh, the amount was 43000 or so. Uh, dollars, so that was able to uh, to help the club out during this uh, this difficult time. The uh, other, I guess, grant that we qualified for was USA Swimming was making money available to clubs across the country, including ours, and we were able to receive a five thousand dollar grant from USA Swimming. So, again, another uh, help in this uh, environment. Uh, in terms of the the uh, financial picture of the club. We just recently concluded our fiscal year at the end of August, and we actually did reasonably well, all things considered. Uh, we generally were in line with, uh, with what we expected for net income uh, for the year. Uh, that's despite a, uh, you know, a significant, or a, a, I shouldn't say significant, a material miss in uh, the amount of dues we collected uh, during the course of the year. And of course, we didn't. Uh, we missed out on a few meets as well. So, we lost uh, income on those two line items, but we more than offset that um, uh, on other line items. Uh, as you probably all know, our our uh, our business model is is contains a highly variable uh, expense structure. So, what we lost in dues and uh, meat income, we uh, more than made up for with uh, lower. Uh, salary expenses, uh, lower meat expenses, lower uh, rental, uh, uh, pool rental uh, expense. So that kind of covers most of it. I, I will say that you know, I think the club has really practiced good financial stewardship over the years, uh, which is really serving us well in this environment. We sit on a, uh, I think, a very solid cash position as we sit here today. Uh, and I think Drew and, and Jacob, are doing a terrific job of trying to create programming uh, for all of our swimmers um, and, and keeping in mind that we do have a fiduciary duty to kind of balance the, the fee component with the expenses. So you probably are all are seeing maybe uh, the cost of, of, uh, of programming go up a little bit. And that's just uh, simply because we have uh, uh, less ability to leverage our, uh, our coach expense and pool rental expense across a wide base of swimmers. So that's a brief snapshot of, uh, of back in its financial state. I think you can feel comfortable that we're in a, a good state um, and that we're uh, uh, going to be able to operate well in this uh, difficult environment for as long as it lasts. Excellent. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> and again, if anybody has questions on that or anything else, you can put them in the chat and we'll, we'll address them as we go along or at the end. Um, all right, moving along. Uh, sort of a quick, um, I, I know a lot of you were around for our programming starting in June, but some of you uh, just joined recently. So June through September, a look back um, this entire time, I guess we should probably have this listed as March through September um, because the evolving restrictions um, you know, at first we kind of did a whole shutdown, then we came back online with our, our Zoom-based back in action programming. Um, and as the restrictions on what we can do and what families feel comfortable doing has evolved, our, our best practices have evolved. Um, there was a time I was looking at, we did a, a parent meeting in, in early June, and I was looking at that slideshow to get ready for this. And most of the things we were doing then, we've, we've changed now. We were doing, you know, one, one per lane or sibling share. We weren't doing super lanes. We were you know, just everything was structured quite a bit differently. Um, Dane County versus Baraboo and Sauk. Um, obviously, being a, a multi-site program, we have different uh, jurisdictions to kind of contend with. Um, 
Our Dane County groups are going to be practicing under Public Health Madison Dane County guidelines. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, the bearable groups have a little bit different guideline. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to be looking to just kind of a Wild West free for all. Um, our goal is, you know, independent and regardless of what the technical guidelines are, our focus is on providing safe practice opportunities for our swimmers. Um, we've transitioned, we had some pods sort of sign up at the beginning and now we've been doing these sign up geniuses and, and I thank everybody for the feedback and, and um, if you have additional feedback on how sign up genius could be improved, um, we'd, we'd love to hear that to kind of make those tweaks. Um, but when thinking about these systems, I, I thought a lot about this quote, which is basically that democracy is the worst form of government there is except for all the other ones. Um, so I understand there's a lot of kinks with the sign up genius, but it I don't know. I just, I, we haven't come across a way that we think will work better for our current situation. As things evolve, like we said, our best practices will evolve as well. We're especially thankful to um, facilities that we've been able to use so far this summer and going forward and for the advocates that were connected to those facilities and helped us out at each one. Um, whether it's, you know, the pool managers or just the swim parent that was on the board or, you know, there's a lot of you that have been really helpful in, in, um, helping us provide programming to your swimmers. So I, I don't even know if that's an exhausted list. Um, I almost, I almost forgot Hawks Landing, which is the one we're using almost, you know, the mo most of our pool time right now is coming from there. So there's a lot of pools and it's, it's been great to use these different facilities this summer. Um, oops, excuse me. So over restrictions in our guidelines will go relatively quick. There are some state agencies. A lot of that is mostly, um, uh, guidelines, not necessarily firm requirements. Uh, USA Swimming and, and our insurance obviously has some requirements along with that. USC Swimming has a bunch of best practices as well. Um, they are very much taking the only stance I guess they can take as a national organization, which is to not make suggestions and not tell us what to do or tell us what we can do. They're very much saying default to your, your strictest local guidelines, um, but just providing some support and some suggestions. Um, Obviously, the individual facilities we're at have some different um, guidelines and restrictions, the most uh, notable of those being um, waivers. So a rem reminder that if you are practicing and there's a list of pools on our September webpage, list of pools that require waivers. So if you're an older swimmer that's heading to Sauk this week and you haven't been there yet this summer, that is a pool that requires a signed waiver before you can practice. Um, the the last one is our probably most important one, the Public Health Madison Dane County. Those are our quote unquote strictest local enforceable guidelines. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about those uh, on the, in the slide in a second here. With that, um, you know, this is, it's been a challenging time. It's been a challenging time to sort of stick to our, our ethos, stick to our guns on the kind of club we want to be and the kind of programming we want to run. Um, to be perfectly frank, uh, seemingly every other club in the Dane County area at some point this summer was running programming that is either significantly or somewhat in violation of public health Madison Dane County rules. Um, we have some of the pools we use now are used by other clubs in the area without naming any of them because it really doesn't matter um, but we were observing a practice the other day from a, another USA swimming club and the way they were running it is just not allowed. It's just not I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's it's unsafe. I, I don't have the expertise to determine that, but it is in direct violation of public health Madison Dane County orders. Um, and we're just, we know people are doing that. We know that, you know, that's happening, but we're just not going to do that. You know, we're not going to compromise what we're doing based on other teams. We're committed to following these rules. We're going to be flexible. You know, we've already seen a lot of changes as our rules have changed. Um, but then we're going to, you know, redefine and reinvent how we train and function as a team. Uh, you saw the board introductions. A lot of our board members have a great background to be, um, you know, in this situation. Chris Carbon is is very involved in the emergency medical side uh, with with um, Madison Fire. Petros is the chief of surgery at Madison's Children's Hospital. Um, Sue is very involved with recreation side and, and adapting to COVID uh, on that with her full time job. We have so many people. Uh, Brian, Brian's in the schools. Ben's in the schools. Um, we have so many people that have a huge knowledge of how to function with this that, that um, you know, we've been focusing on adapting as, as we go. Main COVID points, and again, these are mostly driven by public health, Madison, Dane County requirements, not guidelines, requirements. 
six feet of social distancing or six feet of distancing at all times. This is the rule that prevents us, for example, of having swimmers uh, one per lane on opposite ends of the pool because when they swim and they go by one another in the middle of the lane, they're within a six foot bubble. Um, hence, if you've been to any of our practices, you've seen what we call super lanes. Shout out to Sue McDade. They should actually be called super lanes, I think, but um, uh, for kind of coming up with that. Um, basically, we, oops, excuse me. Come on now. We basically have double wide lanes that allow the swimmers to circle swim, but in larger than normal circles, so that they're able to pass by one another within six feet of, uh, of each, or, uh, you know, six feet of each other or greater. Uh, masks is huge. Uh, they're obviously required in indoor spaces, but we require them as a club, indoor and outdoor. Our rule is from the car to the pool and the pool to the car. Um, we want to keep our different practice groups physically separate. Um, lots of our outdoor pools have plenty of deck space for that, but uh, Edgewood, for example, um, if one group is finishing uh, a practice and the other group's coming in, we have them on, on one side of the pool, whereas the other group had their stuff on, on the other side of the pool. So we keep not only the kids physically separate, but also their equipment. Um, our positive test book protocol, um, I don't know that we have the ability to force you to tell us if, if someone in your family or your swimmer has a positive test, but we sure would appreciate it. We will keep their name anonymous, but we would like to let um, other people that may have come in contact with them know. Um, we've double checked this a couple times, but uh, the way we are running practice, we have described it to employees of Public Health Madison, Dane County, and they've checked with the CDC. Um, the way we run practice does not uh, fall under the CDC definition of close contact. Um, if, if someone has close contact with, with a confirmed positive, there's all sorts of steps on isolation and quarantine. We do not have to take any of those based on the way that we run practice. Um, now, we do want to let everybody know if there's been a case because there's certainly possibility that, you know, if your swimmer is practicing with another swimmer, they might also be socializing with that swimmer before or after practice, or we don't know what happens outside of the pool, but we can tell you that the way we run practice has been approved by Public Health Madison Dane County as uh, not requiring any isolation or quarantine steps in the event of a positive case. Um, and knock on wood, we don't have too many of those. Uh, we'll continue to work with Public Health Madison and County and others to stay up to date on all that. Obviously, you're aware that things are changing constantly and Dane County numbers aren't great right now, with, with especially with the university reopening. Um, there you go. That's a lot on Public Health Madison Dane County. Obviously, the Baraboo programming has a little bit different set of circumstances. I'll be honest, uh, Brenda and Jill have been keeping up on that, and I'm not as well versed on that, so there's not as much information in the slide. Um, but again, I guess the focus there would be we're committed to running um, you know, safe practices for our kids, regardless of what the, uh, the, the guidelines are. Switching gears just a little bit, um, MAP guidelines. This was something that was new last year. This was a huge component of our parent meeting last year was these MAPs. MAP stands for Minor Athlete and Abuse Prevention Policy. Um, this is something that is new to USA Swimming and to all Olympic sports last year. Um, the result of all, a lot of the you know, stories that have been out there. There's a United States Center for Safe Sport is what it's called that uh, kind of is an overseer of every, it's not an arm of USA Swimming, it's an overseer of USA Swimming and USA Taekwondo and track and hockey and everything else. And so they have these rules that, that apply to every sport. Um, none of these rules are different because of COVID. So anything that applied for MAP last year applies this year. Um, the main points, most of the things in MAP were stuff that either we were already doing um, because it was mandated by USA Swimming or we were already doing because it was common sense. Things like having an anti-bullying policy, things like doing safe sport training for our coaching and our staff, um, things like making sure our, our language and our interactions with our uh, athletes are appropriate. All of that stuff um, is contained in MAP, but it's stuff we've been doing for a decade plus anyway. Um, some of the main points, uh, another one would be the interaction should be observed, inter any interaction between an athlete and a coach should be observable and interruptible. Um, obviously, with less parents on deck in a COVID environment, um, that the parents aren't always there, but, but the idea is we're staying um, inside of other swimmers, other, you know, um, coaches, stuff like that. We're not taking kids off into a, a private space like a hallway for a one-on-one -on -one chat. 
Um, there are a lot of map issues related to meets. Um, we don't need to delve into those right now as if, if and when we're able to run kind of the more normal meets we've run in the past. There's a lot of, you know, what meet marshals can do in and around locker rooms, that kind of thing. Um, one of the biggest ones, and this especially for the older athletes, is the electronic communication policies. Um, coaches may not send an electronic communication one-on-one -on -one to an athlete. Um, obviously, coaches aren't doing that a lot and don't have a need to do that. But where that comes into play, and it's been happening a lot with kind of these changes in practice the last couple of weeks, is people texting uh, myself or Drew or any other coach and saying, hey, is it okay if I switch from Tuesday to, you know, high school kid or an older middle school kid? Is it okay if I switch my Tuesday to a Wednesday? Puts us in a rough spot because by map, technically, you know, like it's easy enough just to say, yep, you know, and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, athlete protection issues there, but that is technically not allowed via map. Um, what we need uh, athletes to do, whether it's an email or a text, if you're communicating with a coach, tag their parent. That way we can just do reply all. It's very easy for us um, and we can answer any concern that you have. So parents, please stress this to your swimmers that aren't on the call, um, that any communication with a coach needs to have a parent tag in on it. Um, so that that way the coach can respond. If the coach doesn't respond because the, there's no parent aid, it's not we, we hate your kid, it's that we're just trying to be compliant with our guidelines. Um, Drew, do you have anything else to add on, on map guidelines before we keep going? You want to talk yeah, about the other the athletes? The other map rule is uh, coaches can't, uh, unless it's an emergency or a tourney, communicate outside the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So even if your kid has emailed or texted you about something and, and put their parent involved, if it's 9 p.m., um, we're not allowed to respond unless it's an emergency such as weather issues. So that's probably the biggest thing. Um, it is an issue a little bit with uh, one of the changes with COVID is, um, you know, in the past we've allowed uh, parents on the deck some of the facilities are now not allowing that, but basically as long as it's able to be interrupted, then the parent, we follow map rules even if they're not on deck at that point. And we always practice uh, what we call two deep leadership, you know, with, with having more than one coach on deck um, to kind of make sure that we're, we're abiding by map. But that again, that's something we've been doing for a long time. Um, something Drew will bring up to the high school swimmers as they get there is that once you turn 18, there is a MAP course that um, uh, swimmers are required to take once, once they become legal adults. Um, and there is some safe sport education in general on USA Swimming's website that might be worth, worth checking out for parents and for swimmers.